Like most fights, it started off with a simple exchange of words. The classic insult of shut up, stupid is what started it all. Yes, those immortal words led to the duel between Gaston Defray and René Ribier. Now, you may be thinking, hey, no big deal. That must have been like two to three hundred years ago. Nope. The year was 1967, and this was between two French politicians, Gaston Defray actually being the mayor of Marseille. Now, it was understood that neither man wanted to die here. In fact, Ribier was getting married the next day. That being said, as the man insulted, he took the duel very seriously and demanded that they use a pace. For those of you that know fencing, the epée is longer than the saber or the foil and can inflict a lot of damage. Now, it turns out Defay was a much better swordsman than Ribier, and holding to his word, Defay did not kill Ribier. He only struck him twice, hoping to ruin his wedding night. Now, despite what Matt Damon and Adam Driver are trying to sell you, this is apparently the last recorded duel that we know of, which begs the question, why did duels disappear? You see, in many pre-modern societies, honor had tangible benefits, often associated not just with the person, but their family. It ensured that they, they had great marriage proposals coming their way. An honorable family and person was trusted with communal resources. Leadership and power positions were reserved for those that had honor. In fact, the loss of honor could lead to being ostracized by your group. Honor was also considered binary in nature, so you either had it or you didn't. If you were dishonored, if you were perceived as being dishonored, all of a sudden, your family, you could lose your standing. In many societies for hundreds, if not thousands of years, honor has been a cultural value, one that's considered by many civilizations to be one of their highest virtues. And as many of you guys know, honor's link with masculinity, with bravery, made it oftentimes a very strong male virtue. Not to say that women can't have honor. Of course they can. In fact, if you do your research, you'll see that there were actually many duels between women. But not to get sidetracked, the point here is that honor, especially if you were a leader, if you were someone of importance, if you were a military officer, your honor was part of who you were. It was something that needed to remain intact, and if it was attacked, you had to respond. Now, before we get into some of history's most famous duels, before we get into the weapons, the death counts, and why dueling disappeared, let's first talk about where dueling actually came from. So, dueling, in some form, is as old as human history. I mean, if you're a biblical scholar or you just went to Sunday school, you know the story of David and Goliath, two men in single combat, representing two very different armies armed very differently, and one backed up by God, the one that triumphed. In fact, if you think about it, one of the first written examples of trial by combat. And that's exactly what we saw from the 5th to the 15th century, is that the church actually institutionalized this with the leadership at the time, is the idea that God would favor the party that was correct. So, whenever you had a lack of evidence, you just simply had it so that they couldn't figure out who was actually telling the truth and the stakes were high. All of a sudden, you had it, and this was pretty rare, you could have two champions face each other in what was known as a judicial duel or trial by combat. In fact, we do know in the 12th century, Henry II institutionalized this in England known as the wager of battle. That being said, if we look back a little bit further, a century Charlemagne, he was known to have as well sanctioned judicial battles. And even though hundreds of years later, the Catholic Church would change course, in 1215, they did allow for trial by combat in specific situations. Now, from the 13th century to the 15th century, we start to see this trial by combat transitioning from judicial to a social and personal context. In fact, during the late medieval period, we start to see specific codes and procedures emerge. In fact, many of you guys have probably used some of the expressions that come from this time period, throwing down the gauntlet. What does it mean? It was actually when a knight, according to the pasta arms, would throw down his gauntlet in a chosen spot and challenge another knight to a fight in a series of sequences. Oftentimes, these challenges were just ways to be able to measure each other, to have champions against champions, but eventually it started spreading into, hey, I've got a beef with this family, with this particular person, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have a champion or I'm going to challenge him myself. In fact, in Italy during the 15th century, that's when we started to see a lot of these challenges popping up. There were formalized procedures that detailed exactly how the duel should take place, the choice of weapons, the location, the time of day, even the dress code was prescribed. Now, the most famous of these codes was the Code Duello. This was popular in the 18th and 19th century, and it laid out exactly how the duel would go about. First, challenge and acceptance. The offended party would send a written challenge 
to the offender. The recipient had the right to apologize or make amends. And if they decided not to, if they wanted to accept the challenge, at this point, they would respond. Next up was the appointment of the seconds. Think of this like your best man, except his job is to save your life. Which for some of you guys had probably been in the bad marriage, you're thinking, ah, my best man led me to the slaughter. Now, but seriously, the job of the second was actually to try to find a way to resolution. They didn't want their friends injured. They definitely didn't want their friends killed. And they were working to the last minute with the other second. Hey, we've got to find an amicable way that we can, yeah, that we can just negotiate. We can avoid the fight. Step three, choice of weapons. And this was usually given to the person that was challenged. They could choose, and they really dependent on the time period. Initially, in medieval times, we're talking, they used maces. Later on, they started using swords. This was very popular, but pistols made their appearance. And actually, I'll talk about why the emergence of the pistol actually led to the decline of dueling. Next up, the dueling location. Very important because the reality is most duels were frowned upon. This is something in some societies, they were outlawed. So you wanted to make sure, hey, no, we weren't going to be disrupted. This was going to be a private place where these two men could face and kill each other with dignity. Next up, we've got the conduct of the duel. And I need to correct myself because at last point, I maybe insinuated that these guys wanted to kill each other. Maybe they did, but that wasn't the point of a duel. A trial by combat maybe was different. But as we met, went towards duels, it was simply about getting your point across. In fact, once a person's honor was considered to be satisfied, which during with pistols sometimes was just firing in the air, firing in the ground, or just a small injury with the sword, that was considered, hey, the point has been made. Neither party wanted to die in most cases. And finally, the outcome. There was a mediating party agreed on by both sides who would end the duel whenever he saw it fit, whenever somebody was injured, definitely when somebody was killed, but more likely once the initial shots were fired or the fighting had gone on for a while and he felt that honor had been restored. Now, gents, really quick, I want to talk about something that actually frustrated me as I was doing the research for this video. It seemed to me that some researchers associated the decline of dueling with the decline of honor. As such, they thought the decline of honor as a virtue was a great thing and that this antiquated word should actually go away. Gents, I'm here to say that that's absolutely absolute bull and it's a misunderstanding of what the word actually means. You see, the idea of honor is an ancient and profound concept that has been held in high regard by countless cultures, societies, and individuals throughout history. Most guys, if you ask them, think that they have it because it embodies virtues of integrity, courage, respect, and duty. But I think in the movie Rob Roy, Robert McGregor said it best, honor is a gift that a man gives himself. Basically, it's an attribute that isn't passively received, but actively cultivated. I like to define honor as the quiet satisfaction of acting in alignment with one's principles. Now, gents, if that at all sounds interesting, you need to check out the project I'm working on over at Mission Fragrances. About five years ago, I got into colognes and I was amazed at how certain fragrances made me feel. It was the whole science of scent. I learned that I was hijacking my olfactory system to feel a certain way. And it got me thinking, can you actually condition yourself using operant conditioning to feel a certain way when you put on certain fragrances? It turns out you can. We developed an entire course and a set of scent triggers. If you want to be more honorable, more courageous, more committed to your goals, we've got a course that can align all of that when you smell certain notes. Seriously, think about it. how many times have you smelled something and it takes you back, a memory, or you smell something and it reminds you, it makes you feel good, it puts you into the zone. To learn more, go over to missionfragrances.com or use that link and go over to the website to discover if scent triggers can help you become the man you know yourself to be. So now let's talk about weapons and let's start off with the medieval period, defined as 1000 AD to 1500 AD. Now, duels and trial by combat at this time were mostly happening between knights and noblemen. And in this case, they were going to use weapons that they were familiar with the long sword. The long sword and the broadsword were very common weapons during this time period. That being said, the mace, especially if armor was involved, was a very common weapon as well. Now, in the 1500s, things started to change up. All of a sudden, we saw armor starting to disappear and we saw the rise of the rapier. Now, a rapier is a long, slender, pointed sword. And honestly, it was the premier choice for many duels because of its precision. And again, remember that most duels, they didn't want to end in death here. That being said, in the case that there wasn't a rapier, other variations of swords, especially small swords, were used. Now, in the 18th and 19th century, things changed dramatically. We saw the introduction of the pistol to dueling and all of a sudden, the stakes went up considerably. And this escalated quickly as pistols all of a sudden became more accurate and the amount of damage they did 
increase. This was a big deal because all of a sudden you went from just getting a nick or a cut to pistol shots at one of your vital organs, or it could enter deep on an extremity and you could die from infection. In any case, the rise of the dueling pistol led to all of a sudden the number of deaths coming out of duels to significantly increase as a percentage. So, what are the actual factors that led to the disappearance of dueling? First up, legal repercussions. Now, initially, governments didn't take a stance. In fact, we talked about, you know, trial by combat, it was actually allowed. But as time went on, governments started to see that, hey, this wasn't the most productive use of our valuable citizens. I mean, initially, it wasn't seen as much of an issue, but then over in France, from 1685 to 716, apparently there were like 4,000 deaths. Now, over time, the numbers did get a little bit better. Apparently, from 1826 to 1834, there were 10,000 duels, but only 400 deaths. And not to be outdone, the English had about 1,000 duels from the 17th to the 19th century. And again, these are the ones that we know of, and they actually had 100 deaths, so a higher percentage rate because they liked using pistols. And believe it or not, the U.S. was far behind. From like 1730 to 1900, we only apparently had 200 recorded duels. Again, most duels were in secret, so there's probably a lot we didn't know about. But yeah, we still, we had quite a few deaths. In fact, some famous ones. 1804, Aaron Burr versus Alexander Hamilton. Aaron Burr at the time was actually the sitting vice president. Alexander Hamilton, a former secretary of the treasury and democratic genius, whose life was cut short by Aaron Burr because of that wound he received. He died a day after the duel. And Burr suffered too. His political career never revived afterwards. But the negative effect wasn't always the case, hence why they kept sticking around. Charles Dickinson versus Andrew Jackson. Dickinson at the time was a famous duelist and he actually shot Jackson right in the chest. And old Hickory, what did he do? He just took his time, he aimed, and he shot Dickinson dead. Now, Jackson would carry that bullet for the rest of his life, but it built up this reputation that this was a tough guy and he would go on to become a U.S. president. And let's not forget the ladies. To be specific, Lady Almeria Braddock versus Miss Epplestone. Taking place in 1792, this was a dispute between two British noblewomen. And you have to appreciate how much these women hated each other because apparently they fired rounds at each other they missed, and then they went ahead and took swords and continued the fight. Now, in the sword battle, Miss Ephestone's arm was injured, and therefore, Lady Braddock was able to leave with her honor. So, I got a little bit off track there, but I wanted to show you the numbers. I wanted to show you examples. In fact, check out the comments in today's video. Tons of, I'm sure, examples of very famous people that died. But when you lose an Alexander Hamilton, when you lose a Pushkin to something as simple as guys getting a little bit hot headed, and you're like, did they really have to have the duel? Governments and society as whole started to realize, hey, this isn't the best way to end arguments. So, all of a sudden, not only were the laws put on the books, but they started being enforced, especially on the seconds, on anyone that was involved in the duel. Pretty much, it started to become a death sentence if you were involved with a duel. And uh, yeah, you could face some pretty serious fines. Next up, let's talk about social change. So, this is the time of the Enlightenment. We see people are going to be more read. The rise of reason, the idea, let's not be driven by our emotions. Is this actually logically make sense that we've got our young, valuable people going out and fighting? and injuring, maiming each other, possibly even killing each other. We saw the rise of the bourgeoisie. So, however you pronounce that word. Point being is you had this middle class popping up. So, they've had to realize that, hey, this just, we don't want this to be part of our culture going forward. And the church went along with this. Religious opposition. Yes, initially there was some maybe looking the other way, but it was always viewed as, you know, kind of a mortal sin to kill somebody. It's one of the Ten Commandments, right? So, the church came down and said, hey, yeah, we're against this as well. And not only the church, the military military took a stand and said, you know what? Yeah, we don't want to be wasting our officers. And the military officership used to be a big deal, especially for those of higher class. Everyone pretty much served in the military. These guys were trained with weapons. They had access to weapons. And it was realized, you know what? We put all this training into these guys. We don't want them needlessly killing each other. Now, this next reason I put is last, but it's probably the most important and the reason that we don't duel today. And that is because we've got alternative avenues. Basically, you can take someone to court. When you've got a decent legal system, it turns out that dispute resolution doesn't have to go the path of violence. So, there you go, gents. Blame it on the lawyers. So, what video to watch next, gents? How about why did men stop being gentlemen? Seriously, when did we stop caring? When did all of a sudden we're like, yeah, whatever. You know, guys, check it out. I had a lot of fun with this video. I think you'll enjoy it. Boom. Click it. Check it out. It's a good one.